Oh, I was so happy. I had been working all of these low hourly rate jobs and usually putting in a decent amount of labor for that amount of money. And it just didn't equate. And also just trying to figure out at that age, like, what do I really want to do with the rest of my life? What do I really want to put my time and my effort into that's going to give me a return? So getting that job financially, it was important to me. And then just knowing that I get the flexibility with it. In today's episode, we have Lana, an advanced technical coach, software engineer, and mentor, and also is an alumni of Grand Circus, which is a coding boot camp. Welcome to the show. Hi, nice to be here. Yeah, so you actually had an interesting background because you were already in the technical role as a technical support specialist before getting into software engineering. Can you tell us more about your prior career before becoming a software engineer? Yeah, so being in technical support, it was far more like customer service. It wasn't necessarily a lot of tech, but because I was interested in tech, I tried to find more technical to things to do with that job. So a lot of it was like programming print servers and troubleshooting laser printers. But majority of it was just customer service. Before that, I had many other jobs. I started my college uh, journey in culinary arts, and then I switched to pastry arts, then I switched to psychology, and then I switched to business. So technology was not always what I wanted to do. And so I worked as a line cook for a while while I was in culinary school. I realized I'm not making enough money for the amount of labor that I'm putting in. And it didn't seem worth it. My cooking passion started to dwindle as I was making a job out of it. And then had a bunch of other random jobs, maintenance at a flower shop. I was a build-out director for construction for a hair salon. So a lot of different things. And I wasn't fulfilled in any of those. I wanted to find out what I could do that was interesting and creative, where I could make money and have job security, as well as flexibility. I took a lot of career and personality assessments and computer programming kept coming up. So I started going to a local library and learning how to code. And that is where it started. That, that's amazing. I think that that's great that you were able to kind of be open to trying different things before you settled on what you're actually you know, doing now. And you mentioned that you were in a customer support role, but then you still push for more of the technical things that were possible within your job. Can you tell us more or maybe give any advice for anyone out there that might have an opportunity like this to start asking their manager or finding ways to do more technical work in their job, even if they're not currently a software engineer? Yeah, you can ask your manager. Your manager might not even know. I have learned that you need to make connections amongst yourself and figure out who are the right people that maybe are not your boss. Your boss might be a good place to start, but I just ended up making friends with people that I worked with and making connections and learning different technical things that they were doing. Everybody has five minutes of downtime. I don't care what anybody says. So you you do have the ability to go and mess around on a project for a little bit and just kind of dabble and also just self-learning just on your own time. If you're interested, then learn a little bit about whatever that topic is and if you like it, keep going. If you don't, move on to something else. You start to see where you can fit whatever you're interested in into your current career. Yeah, so speaking of self-learning, what was your curriculum that you put together? You mentioned that you started to look up resources online to teach yourself. Tell us more about that experience of trying to teach yourself. So I, I feel like a lot of coding tutorials were coming out around the time that I was trying to learn about it. So Code Academy... Mark Zuckerberg had some coding tutorials and there were just some random ones that I found online. I really just Googled how to code and some random websites came up, some you know bigger ones like Code Academy came up and I just started doing exercises and seeing how they made me feel, if they were challenging, were they too challenging and just kind of learning random things. I didn't try to get into too complex of problems. It's not like I was trying to build some complex database, but it was. it's helpful when you are learning something that you already know. Building a program for rock, paper, scissors. We already know what that is. Writing it in code is easier than if we are writing up some kind of service for a company that we're not familiar with that service. Yeah, that makes sense that if you're working on a project for your first time, you should try to limit the areas that you're not familiar with, right? Like you mentioned before, you understand conceptually how a 
specific. So I'm sure during this process, you were maybe like more wary about whether this was right or not, since you had so many different career switches and you had a good idea of what you didn't like and what you did like. Do you remember like a specific moment while you were learning the code where you're like, you know what, this does feel more like the right track compared to your previous careers? I had a moment after I think I was just ready to switch in my major and I was also on financial aid. So I had to choose a major and I didn't want to just keep going down the track of whatever I was in at the time. But I do remember I was in my first programming class in college and It was a Python class, but whatever we did, I understood it. And it was, I'm sure it was something simple, but I understood it and it made me just so happy. And I remember I went out to my car and like I started crying and I called my boyfriend at the time and I was like, I actually understand this and I feel connected to it. And this is something that I can actually do. I was always very intimidated by coding and I think a lot of people are. And I was just proud of myself that I was able to understand it. That click for me, that moment, I knew I was going to continue pursuing that degree. Yeah. So help us understand the timeline a bit. You were self-teaching. It sounds like you were going to school as well. And then you also end up going the boot camp route. Well, how did this all kind of line up? So I was going to a community college and I got an associate's degree and I actually changed my major so many times. I got an associate's in general studies, and then I got the associate's in computer programming. And while I was finishing out that degree, I realized I didn't have all the skills that I needed to get the jobs that I wanted. And even just doing self-learning, that would have taken a lot of extra time, a lot of extra stress. And so I learned that there were coding boot camps and that They were much quicker. They were less expensive. I thought if I had that as well as a college degree, maybe that would get me in the door better than just having an associate's degree. So I learned about Grand Circus and I started going there. And actually, when I was going to Grand Circus, I was finishing my computer programming associate's degree and I was starting a bachelor's degree. I never ended up finishing the bachelor's degree because I realized I didn't need it. I was going to a university, a community college, and a boot camp all at the same time. Yeah, lots going on. Uh, For anyone out there that might be at this fork in the road where they're thinking, should I go to school for computer science or should I go to a a boot camp? How would you recommend they think about uh, making that decision? I think it is about the kind of person you are and what your learning style is, what environment you thrive in, and also financially. Some people obviously don't want to spend a ton of money. They don't have the money. They don't get financial aid, so they'll have that full bill for college. Some people want that quicker experience and the hybrid experience for a boot camp. Boot camps can be more stressful. I think that some people think coding in like a 10-week time frame, that's also intimidating. So I think it's really up to you, but I would always recommend looking into a boot camp over college just because I've done both. And I know that you can get the same skills, if not better, from a boot camp in a shorter amount of time with less money. So after the boot camp, you had actually a a quick, very quick time finding and securing a job. Only took you 30 days after graduating to land your first job as a software engineer. What steps did you take during or before the surge? How did you prepare to land on your feet so quickly? The boot camp gave us a lot of resources for looking for jobs, how to update our resume, how to stand out, how to have a better LinkedIn. So they did help a lot with that. And then I really just think that I was applying to a lot of like, I think that I kept a Trello board or an Excel sheet of all the places that I applied to. And it was like hundreds at that time. So there was definitely a lot that I didn't get. And then it was also networking in person. This was before COVID. Meetups aren't what they used to be even now. But before COVID, there were a lot more meetups. There were a lot more opportunities to make connections. And so I think just going to all of those meetups, networking a lot, getting my name out there, business cards. You never know who you're going to meet in a coffee shop. Just having something on you to be able to give someone Because a lot of the time, it really is not about the skills that you know. And I've learned that, that it is a lot about the people that you know, the connections that you have, and all of us helping each other. Yeah, that definitely makes sense that, especially when early on in your career, a lot of the 
there's less expectations on what you're supposed to know, especially in the entry level roles. Do you remember what the interview process was like? How was it when you were going out for these interviews coming out of a boot camp? Yeah, each company is different. They have different processes. Some of them are very quick and maybe they have one interview. Some of them have five. So out of boot camp, I wasn't interviewing at places I had long interviews, but there's usually a behavioral interview, a phone call with a recruiter, and that just to kind of see if you're not crazy, if you just are maybe a good culture fit, if you have the energy, if you have the skills that you say that you have, then you'll talk to someone technical and do kind of a behavioral, kind of a technical verbal interview. Those might be done on the phone. Maybe it's a virtual meeting. And then they'll usually bring you in physically for a technical interview. Sometimes that is a whiteboard interview where you talk out your thoughts and you write down a coding problem and you solve that for them. Sometimes they'll give you a laptop and you write code or you do some kind of task. I've also had the first job that I got as a software engineer, they sent me a coding project and you just have to build what that was, build that task, that landing page, or depending on what it is, you'll build that thing for them. And then they grade it essentially. And then they usually will bring you in for maybe a follow-up interview or maybe based off of that, you get an offer. Can you share what that offer was for that first job out of the bootcamp? That first job, I believe it was $52,000. And once you got that first job, like, do you remember like what your reaction was? Like landing a job, going through that entire experience, getting a job and getting paid for something that you had a lot of interest in. What was that experience like? Oh, I was so happy. I had been working all of these low hourly rate jobs and usually putting in a decent amount of labor for that amount of money. And it just didn't equate. And also just trying to figure out at that age, like, what do I really want to do with the rest of my life? What do I really want to put my time and my effort into that's going to give me a return? So getting that job financially, it was important to me. And then just knowing that I get the flexibility with it. Most software engineering jobs offer flexibility. They usually have better health insurance than what I was getting. So like all of that was a nice package. And then also just being able to feel validated, like I can actually do this skill well enough that someone's going to pay me for it. And now I get to be a part of a team that they trust me to build things with them. And also being able to learn from real software engineers, not just in class and, you know, asking around, but real software engineers on the job that have been doing it for a while, that was like another educational experience for me. Yeah, I think the expectation from self-teaching or going through a boot camp or school is that you're not going to come out knowing everything. You just need to know enough to do the job. Most of the learning is going to be on the job. Speaking of the job, that first job, do you remember what you were doing as like a, a you know, a, a entry-level software engineer? Like what was you spending your like first year? What kind of work were you doing? So as happy as I was getting this job, it was not the language that I was, I, I was familiar with many languages because I went to the college and I also went to the boot camp. So I had already known Python, Perl, or Python, C, C Sharp. I knew Java, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. I knew all these popular languages. And then my first job, I'm supposed to use Perl. I'm like, this is outdated. And all of my self-learning, I'm looking up new languages and modern languages and more popular languages and Perl is popular, but a lot of people don't love it and it's not as used as some of the other languages. So going into that was interesting because it was a learning curve. I spent years learning these other languages and Perl, but once you learn one language, it's easier to learn more. So a lot of it was that learning curve. And then the place that I worked at, we did promotional websites like sweepstakes and just like landing pages where you enter to get a prize. A lot of it was repetitive. I, I was able to build this cool tool with someone where it automated that process. That was one of the cool things I did there. But a lot of it was making updates. My second job I only kept for two weeks because it was very sketchy. It was a lot more money. That one was $75,000. And I think that's one of the reasons I went. I started not liking my current job. And so I was looking for something else. I wanted more pay, but I mainly just wanted to feel more comfortable. So the pay was like a huge thing for me. But 
I get there and it was easy to get that job. And maybe it's because it was sketchy, but people were leaving. And I will never forget this. And this was like a really big red flag for me. The admin, like their main admin guy, they only had one. And this is the guy that's supposed to keep their databases secure and everything. And when you start at a software engineering job, usually you get a temporary password to your laptop, to the database, to all the things. And I say, hey, usually like I change this where I don't see a button to change this password. Where do I do that? And he said, you can write it down on a sticky note for me and just put it on my desk. And I thought he was kidding. And he was very serious. I'm like, that is crazy. Like, I'm trying to learn best practices. And you just told me to write my sticky note on a piece of paper and put it in your office for everyone to see. So yeah, I left that job. And the next one I got pretty quick. And that was actually through a connection. Mm, okay. So that, I mean, that definitely goes to what you're saying about networking is so important. I want to actually go back to this like sketchy job. I think it's, first of all, uh, kudos to you for knowing that this wasn't the right environment just two weeks in and being willing to quit. I think a lot of people waited out for a few more months and things don't get better. They only get worse when you start uncovering more red flags. Uh, how, how, how are you comfortable just kind of uh, jumping ship so quickly from starting a new job? I am comfortable leaving anything that's not for me. So I have no problem leaving an environment, a person, whatever it is. If it doesn't feel right for me, I can't spend my life there. Just seeing those red flags, there were other ones too. One thing you mentioned earlier about starting your first job, you had to learn Perl, something you had to use before. But a big part of the, the job, which I think you, you obviously know now, is that it's a lot of learning. You always have to constantly learn. How do you cope with this understanding that you're not going to know everything? and that you're always going to have to keep on learning. How do you manage to stay up to date within the, the tech industry? I don't because I know I'm never going to know everything. And that's something that I help my mentees with a lot. When you're beginning, you think that you have to know all the things and you get so overloaded and so overwhelmed. Be and then you start having imposter syndrome when really like a senior software engineer might only know those nine things because they know that they can Google the rest of them. Like memory isn't something that we, we don't have to memorize a lot of things as a software engineer. So I think just knowing you're not going to know everything, whatever you need to know for the specific task right now, just go and learn that. And then if you need to learn other stuff later, you can go and learn it at that time. If something is interesting to you, go and learn it. But do not stress yourself out thinking that you have to know every single thing. So I think a lot of it is just Know what you have to know right now and don't overwhelm yourself because then you won't want to learn much of anything. It, you seem to have a good intuition for like what, what works for you, what, what you like. But let's say someone comes along that doesn't have this kind of intuition, like a friend or family that sees that, oh, this looks like an interesting career being a software engineer. They're interested in it. They come talk to you about it. How do you figure out if it's going to be a good fit for them? What kind of questions would you ask? How do you think about whether it's a good path for them or not? I... Do believe it's a lot of them knowing themselves, even with questions I can ask. Some people don't even know if what they're saying is what they mean. So I, I feel like doing different assessments, learning your learning style and stuff like that. But I, I actually was recently helping some mentees with getting over that they don't have to know all the things. And I think, it, I think unfortunately, you have to go through the experience of trying to find all of this information about something that you're trying to do and then realizing in a week that you didn't need to know half of it. And sometimes that's just the way that you have to learn is going through that experience. Because sometimes I can tell you that you won't need to know all these things, but the mind is so curious, it's going to go and look for those things anyways. And so yeah, no amount of questions I ask, I think, can help somebody learn that. Yeah, sometimes I think learning the hard way is like the best way, maybe the only way to really get the point across. I think your story is awesome where you are able to try different career paths and then build this intuition over time to know what works and what doesn't work for you. Anyone in the industry already software engineer probably has this intuition, but they don't follow it. But I think you're, you're a great example of someone that has seen success by following what is the right fit for you or not. So thank you so much for your time. Again, Mana, technical coach, software engineer, and mentor. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your journey, experience, and advice with us. Thank you for awesome. having me.